In this video, we're going to talk about Ethereum arbitrage. I'm going to explain what it is, is it profitable, how hard it is to actually make your own Ethereum arbitrage bot and where to start. So what you're looking at right now is Odos protocol. Basically, they allow you to have real time insight into where different arbitrages are. They mostly uh, concerned with cross chain arbitrage. So going between other chains, not only Ethereum, but you have, for example, Polygon here, Gnosis, Ethereum, and you have this route uh, finding the best route to actually swap different tokens. So what is arbitrage and what is Ethereum arbitrage? Arbitrage in general is uh, the process of actually finding two different places, selling and buying the same thing, where you can buy on one thing, buy on one place and sell the asset on the other place, uh, earning some kind of a small fee in between. So, for example, if you were to find one exchange which sells uh, Ethereum for two thousand dollars and another exchange that, uh, for example, sells Ethereum for uh, two thousand one hundred dollars, then, for example, you can buy on this first exchange, sell on the other and profit $100. This is basically the example. Of course, uh, you won't see uh, such a differences, but still there is something. Uh, we're going to go through a bunch of things. So having this Ethereum example in mind, uh, there's a service called CryptoRank.io where you can actually see just for Ethereum, but also for the for a bunch of other tokens as well, what kind of differences you have between prices. And as you can see, uh, those differences are sometimes very, very large and then ac actually can be even larger than $100. So for example, here, the largest exchange, uh, the largest difference is 5-8% and between uh, ZB.com and ZigZag, uh, the two exchanges. The problem with that is that if you see this kind of things, then most of those exchanges are centralized and it's difficult to take the money out of the exchanges because the process is longer than you can think. Of course, you can always look for DEXs. Uh, DEXs are the centralized exchanges and it might be much simpler to go, for example, here between uh, ZigZag and SushiSwap. Uh, so it won't be that pronounced, like the difference is only 0.19%, but it's already something. Uh, you can also go between ZigZag itself. It seems like it's not optimized entirely. So maybe uh, this is the exchange to do some things, but uh, I don't know this exchange. And of course it can be super, super small. Uh, also you can go between, you can do the arbitrage between different centralized exchanges. So for example, you can go between like Binance and Upbeat. Uh, or something like uh, Bitrex and uh, Coinlist, uh, those differences are still there. Of course, with when you try to do arbitrage, uh, Ethereum arbitrage on those kind of uh, centralized exchanges, you have to uh, assume that there's this withdrawal period and this is where actually why the differences are there still in 2023 after so many years. Uh, because this is a longer process to withdraw the money. Whereas with the decentralized exchanges, so for example, if you were to make a swap between Uniswap and SushiSwap, because that's the simplest one, uh, then you wouldn't have those things and you could do the transaction, the one transaction to buy on one exchange, sell on the other, profit in between. Of course, this is not so simple anymore because you don't have this kind of differences between Uniswap and SushiSwap. Uh, everyone is looking at that. So you would have to go through smaller tokens and also your route might be more complicated. So for example, you, uh, if you want to do arbitrage on Ethereum mainnet, you would have to, for example, uh, take Ethereum, buy some small token on Uniswap, swap that token on, for example, sushi swap to another token take that another token find small exchange and swap it back to ethereum and if you're lucky then you have some kind of a profit doing that uh, across the line uh, and this is what for example autos is showing you here where you have sushi swap but you go through elk finance smaller exchange uh, and different uh, different actually chains and then back into sushi swap at the end profiting a couple of sushi uh, in the end of course here, the profit is super small. And if you make the computations wrong, then you're going to lose the money. Of course, someone can be can do that things before you. Uh, you're competing with others. That's why uh, doing your own Ethereum arbitrage bot is super complicated because you have to be faster than others. Also, because it's everything is on, uh, on, on chain, other people can see your transactions. Uh, it means they don't see your code, of course, but if they see your transactions, they can try to do the same thing. Uh, you also have to fight against MEV bots. They're trying to sandwich you in between. There are many problems. So definitely, uh, this is a, a very important disclaimer. If anyone is promising you a free uh, arbitrage bot, 
it doesn't work. It just doesn't. No one will share it with you because uh, if they really can make profits, they, they, they did like really a lot of work to put that in it, uh, then they won't really share it because why would they? I mean, if it's profitable and brings the money, they don't want to have more competition because if you start to use the same bot, then actually day profits will uh, just go down quite a lot. Now, let's get to some of the other sources I have for you. So Block Native has a pretty nice article on a big beginner's guide to MEV bot and creating arbitrage bot on Ethereum mainnet. So uh, of course, if you're an MEV searcher, so this is a person who search for different opportunities on how to uh, do MEV. MEV means maximum extractable value and offer refers to things that uh, where you profit from different kind of block uh, configurations. If you, for example, sandwich someone, that means that you buy before them and sell after them, profiting from the small increase in price. But in this case, it's arbitrage, so it's also part of MEV uh, at large. So maximum extractable value, uh, what is arbitrage in the world of MEV? So basically, this is what I explained to you. You would start with asset A and sell it for asset B on the exchange where asset B is cheaper. Then you would take asset B and sell it for asset A on the other exchange, receiving more of asset A in return than when you started. So this basic ex example is extremely competitive in the traditional finance. Uh, and this is basically what high frequency traders are doing in a traditional finance. You still have a lot of competition in crypto, but not so much. So if, for example, you're coming from high frequency trading you might do something with the arbitrage here and start by just comparing and looking on chain. So basically looking at the data, real time feed of the mempool. Mempool means that those are the transactions that are going to validators. So before the validation and before being included in the blockchain, they are going to the mempool uh, to be validated. And sometimes you can see them and sometimes that's why uh, MEV bots, how they work is basically they see your transaction of like buying one token and they can include their transaction before you of buying and selling in a particular block that they want to profiting from that thing. The same thing goes with arbitrage. Arbitrage is in the end uh, MEV because you really need to be included in certain blocks. You, the, time, the time frame here is very important. You also have to do that in one transaction most of the time on chain at the very least because uh, you have to be sure that you have those price differences. Those price differences are super small so it's, that's why it's very easy to lose money. I'm going to show you some statistics by the end of the video of how people are making money and losing money uh, using uh, Ethereum arbitrage but for now, let's see how it works here. Basically, Block Native gives you a basic code. Uh, so searching for arbitrage opportunities. I'm going to post the link down below today um, to the GitHub repo on this article. You're going to see that. Uh, this is a good starting point. Uh, of course, it shouldn't work uh, right away. It's not like you just, you know, plug this GitHub repo and it will give you money. Definitely not. And you won't find such a thing. Most of the uh, such a things are uh, definitely uh, some in some ways comes or that you don't want to use. So it's the best actually write your own arbitrage script. Uh, of course, there is something to be started here, basically looking at Uniswap and uh, SushiSwap liquidity pools. So you definitely can look at the code that they're having if you are looking for uh, creating your own bot. Oh, also they have uh they, they own SDK, uh, different APIs that you can use for live data, uh, on-chain data, which is pretty cool. Uh, they also using Flashbot bundles. So Flashbots are uh, uh, this uh, whole gr group of researchers trying to provide uh, tools for MEV, both for MEV protection as well for MEV searches and people using that uh, to, uh, to profit off different MEV activities. So uh, there's a, a bunch of things here uh, in this article worth looking at. So definitely have a look if you want to build your own bot. Uh, I'm going to include the link down below in the description uh, if you want that. And for now, let's jump into other resources. So uh, I've been talking already about the crypto rank uh, and also how you can go between centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. Also important stuff is that you can actually do uh, DEX versus uh, uh, versus uh, centralized exchange, meaning that you can, for example, do uh, arbitrage between Uniswap and Binance. This is also still possible, one of the opportunities here in the, in the market. Uh, but of course, you have to be super, this is like super interesting. No, no one is really calculating the, the extent of that because it's much harder to grasp uh, the, the extent, but definitely there's something to be done between like centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges. Uh, you don't only have to do everything on chain, and also you don't have to do everything uh, in the, on the centralized exchanges. Those are different problems. Also, cross-chain arbitrage, this is something that I've mentioned with others. Uh, 
this is the kind of the uh, this is the kind of the things you're getting here for example going between polygon and gnosis chain here as you can see you can see a bunch of options that they uh, that they're looking at currently this is real time so those options are real and of course they probably will disappear in the next couple of seconds after the next blocks uh, so this is super interesting because uh, going between different chains of course uh, is less competitive but much harder to do properly as well and you have to be sure that you maintain the uh, you know all the uh, all the assets on different on different chains as well but really interesting if you want to go into MEV arbitrage uh, do your own uh, arbitrage then definitely look at the different EVM so Ethereum virtual machines uh, like Polygon like Binance uh, like different L2s Optimus Avalanche and so on and compare that uh, Phantom uh, and compare that with uh, and compare that with Ethereum mainnet uh, so this is interesting stuff now let's get next to the uh, to the paper I found this is a large scale study of Ethereum arbitrage ecosystem uh, by Robert McLoggin, Christopher Kroegel, Giovanni Vigna, uh, and they analyze how it works and what kind of things you can do. Uh, basically, uh, what they do is that uh, they try to show that actually there are so many arbitrage opportunities that in total you could basically make like millions of dollars uh, over the over the month. So uh, they basically perf uh, they performed like two large scale measurements over 28 month period and uh, over those 28 month period so that's like uh, L, like two years and a half they saw the opportunities of like 321 million dollars which means like uh, every month there's around over 10 million dollars of opportunities for arbitrage so that's quite a lot and they actually uh, identified 4 billion opportunities then later uh, and the potential bot which would give weekly profit of close to 400 ether uh, at the time that was like $500,000 right now it's around uh, $800,000 uh, and moreover they have a code for that so if you're looking for the for their code they have a code of course I will include that down below uh, in the description but again this arbitrage bot for the Ethereum blockchain won't solve your problems. It it's like won't give you uh, automatically money. You will have to get deeper into their work. Uh, but really interesting stuff that they managed to calculate how much uh, actual arbitrage opportunities there are in total in the in the crypto market. They link to this code here in the in the paper, as you can see, uh, and they try to analyze different, uh, especially on-chain opportunities between different automated market makers like Uniswap. So that's that's really interesting and interesting that they managed to build their own bot. Uh, the paper will be also included in the description. So if you want to have a look at that, that's probably interesting. Now let's get to uh, Sam Green and his notes on arbitrage in Ethereum. That's coming from 2021, but since then uh, they have updated quite a bit. And also he's one of the creators of Odos, the the, the tool that I have mentioned that shows cross-chain uh, opportunities for arbitrage which is also very interesting. So in this article, which is really, really great, he explains how uh, arbitrage works in general, how arbitrage bots work, uh, and also uh, how they provide different tools for MEV searchers and people doing the arbitrage. So definitely here's the general example of the trader arbitrage bot and how you can profit out of that, uh, how you can bribe miners as well, because that's also part of the game here that you want your transactions to be included uh, and for that you want to be first in the mempool paying the my uh, pay paying the miners to include your block your block in the into the into the correct block that you want to go to uh, so there are different competitive tools for arbitragers flashbots of course that i have mentioned but also different private relays uh, he's citing blocks route here but also you want to basically have private access to the to the mining because you want to have to be certain that your blocks are included where you want them to go now there are different also tools that help you with uh, different aggregation of data so that's also cool uh, now he's also talking about different opportunities so the one i've mentioned is cross-chain arbitrage this is what they're doing at odos but also you have mf uh, mev sgx uh, you have vitalik article commented here different addicts and the whole rabbit hole that you can go to with a bunch of twitter profiles as well now the tool that i would use uh, and i'm using uh, for for many of the stuff that i'm doing uh, when it comes to mev is of course eigenfi eigenfi is a, is a platform for different kind of um, 
different kind of uh, uh, MEV, not only arbitrage, but also sandwiching, liquidation, flash loans, and everything in between. And you can basically see on chain uh, the analysis, what people are doing on chain. So for example, if you click on arbitrage here, if you go down on the homepage and click on arbitrage, you'll be basically seeing different uh, addresses doing uh, different profits. And for example, you can see that the top, uh, uh, top uh, arbitrager here got like $5 million in the last 28 uh, days. I think that's when, you know, in the last seven days. Uh, and in the last 30 days, if you go through arbitrage, then basically uh, this, the, you have much more people here. But most of them are smaller, uh, smaller accounts and they manage to get profits of like hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is still amazing. But you don't see that many people, that many addresses here. Now, if you click on one of, the, one of them and see the particular transactions, you'll be able to actually go with uh, what they actually do and what they use. Uh, so MEV acceptance, um, you have the favorite tokens that they trade. So you can see, for example, that they go between Bond, Pepe, Pepe, T-Bond, Tetra. So they have definitely if it's a Ethereum mainnet bot, but on top of that, they actually do a lot of smaller coins that they choose. Of course, here you have to be careful because you don't want to trade every coin uh, because on the other hand, you have different toxic coins in the market that actually are honeypots. You won't be able to sell them and so on. So of course, uh, this does this analogy of Ethereum being this dark forest. There are different bots, but also different toxic assets. You have to be careful all of all of them. Uh, so this is uh, basically his latest transactions and the cool stuff here is that you can really go into each of them uh, and see what he's doing what kind of cost and profit he has so as you can see those profits even the cost is quite large like one thousand six hundred dollars the profit itself is like thirteen dollars and it's really to mess up like he's also losing a little bit of money here uh, sometimes he's getting like a great deal here for example he has a cost of 100 dollars and did 120 dollars profit but generally speaking those are small amounts so it's a little bit like pennies before the the steamroll and you're trying to be care careful of course there's like a bigger wins but this one is actually for liquidation not arbitrage which is another thing um, and basically for arbitrage you get small wins this is like a super big win here so we can have a look at that because it ma like he managed to oh he actually might do the arbitrage for the crv this is this might be the exploiter for uh for for the crv and the recent drama so i didn't know that and just discovered that going through this different arbitrages but as you can see this this looks like an arbitrage bot in general uh, and this is the way to discover and look on chain you can eigenfee is really great for that you can get inspired but of course they won't provide any code now if you want some code this of course uh this code from uh from goldfish so this is from the the creators of this paper i have mentioned another one the, the code you can have a look at is the from block native uh, and of course i would recommend going through a chat gpt at this point chat gpt is really great at creating different code but this won't solve all your problems and what i want to convey to you is that you really have to make sure that you want to go this route this is not an easy route for making money in crypto uh, you will have to compete constantly and there will be better bots better than you that will make your uh past profit obsolete. So even if you make it, even if you make a fast 10, 100, $1,000, nothing is guaranteed. It's not like passive income that you can set up for once and that will be it. it it's the constant struggle to make your bots be the best. So having said that, of course, if you're trying to and planning to build a cool bot, uh, let me know on Twitter. If you have something, I, uh, I'm i cutting myself a little bit, but can help you with some math and some ideas for where you can go and look for opportunities, uh, mostly on the advisor, advisorial role. Uh, happy to do that. Uh, hit me up on Twitter if you want to build your own uh, arbitrage bot or looking into this kind of opportunities. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, of course, to learn more about MEV, but also different crypto narratives i'm big on narratives like uh, DeFi and ls DeFi within DeFi, uh, meme coins uh, ai coins and a bunch of others as well thank you for watching see you in the next video